one of my uh, one of my coworkers said, "I'm sorry, we kicked you out, or we drove you out of the kitchen." <laughs> but there, look, this is our day off. We've been having a great time, um, yeah. and and it's just we got back late, okay. so we got back late, so um, you know the the booze started flowing and uh, food was late. And so like, I, I can't ask them to be like, Hey guys, just be quiet. Exactly. While I do a podcast for this podcast that you're not on. So <laughs> they can all join. That's a lot of I people. I told though. them that I've told them <laughs> that. And uh, yeah, uh, if you have, I, I've also told them if there are specific questions, I will find the right person. <laughs> um Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Oh, do I introduce myself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I do this last time? Yeah. Like, you're also, like, yes. I'm Chris, I'm Ross, and I just kind of stared at the camera, and you guys are pointing at me like, <laughs> oh, my and part. I'm Derek Powell, the guest tonight on... <laughs> my favorite part <laughs> is I think every guest after that, I prepped, and I was like, oh, Derek's done this before. He'll yeah. remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to do you want to do it again? No. <laughs> nope. And I, and I'm Derek Powell, and this <laughs> is off, off the road road poke. Uh, Jesus Christ! All right, continue. Uh, I'm close, it up. The <laughs> good news is the show's labeled. They've already known the title of the show by the time they press play. They, it's oh. unlikely that they're listening to audio without knowing what the show's name is already. So we're good for that. Oh, um, yeah. Oh, my cheeks hurt. I'm laughing. <laughs> Good, good. This is going to be a good 15 minutes, you guys. 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we We're invited totally Derek. Yeah, we invited Derek back to the show. Uh, if those of you who didn't listen to his first appearance, Derek uh, works, well, first of all, automotive writer for years. Yes, journalist extraordinaire. Like you've, you've literally written for almost everybody, haven't you? Yeah, uh, it, almost. Um, I've written for uh, Motor Trend. Uh, Motor Trend, I would say, is my 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 home sweet home. You know, um, uh, I've driven for. Or I've driven. My God, <laughs> technically, my yes. God. If you've uh, written I've, for him, you've probably driven for him. I. You yeah. are correct. I have. I've written for uh, Motor Trend, Auto Week, uh, The Drive, Jalopnik, uh, Haggerty. Uh, uh, those are those are pretty much the the big ones. Um, there were a few outlets that I would love to write for. Um, so who knows? <laughs> I just, I just got, I got sidetracked by this little television project that's going on. <laughs> Tiny little project. Tiny little project. Which is Top Gear USA. I finally have like burned uh, it in. I, I must, I must unburn that for you. It is Top Gear America. Is it really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Top Gear Why USA. Why did I do that wrong? Well, I, USA I was the prior there, man. iteration. So Top Gear USA started back in like, I don't know, 2007 yeah. or 2008. Uh, it ran for several seasons, I believe seven seasons. Um, and then it was replaced by Top Gear America, uh, which ran six episodes. Um, and there was some downtime. And in the meantime, uh, Discovery bought Motor Trend. Um, and uh, Mother Trend turned out to be a great home for, as you know, car car shows and car films. Um, it's really taken off. I like, think that's yeah. why I wrote it wrong. That's all right. I, I, you know, my um, my Google search brought up the first iteration image, and I was like, oh, it's the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so now Top Gear America has been rebooted, uh, featuring Dak Shepard, Rob Corddry, and Jethro Bobbington. Um, and it's a, it's a complete reboot. And I, I know that term is bandied about very loosely, mm. but in this case, it really is a complete reboot. We're not trying to recreate uh, what uh, has been done in any other country, specifically the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we, we definitely want to honor the, the format and the legend of the show and bring our own spin to it. And so far it seems to be uh, a really great um, it, we, we've had some really great reception on it. And so um, I'm excited to, uh, to see it take off and these episodes rolling out. And uh, 
right now uh, we're filming season two um which is amazing in that was utah quick. so it's great yeah you know uh, the other thing is that um we I, I, I can uh, I can direct you to the March issue of Motor Trends where the cover story features uh, my writing about going behind the scenes during uh, shooting Top Gear America during the pandemic, which is uh, all sorts of challenges on top of challenges. And um, I, we can get into it a little, a little bit later, but Top Gear is not an easy show to make. And... <laughs> It, it, it really isn't. And, and uh, we can get into that whenever you want. But to throw a pandemic on top of that is just, it, it's almost, it, it feels insurmountable. And so the fact that we not only shot a season and we shot a season successfully COVID free and with creative that we were all proud of was just a success in and of itself. Um, and in the meantime, Discovery was launching its own streaming platform, Discovery Plus. And so there was a lot of back and forth of like, is uh, Top Gear going to go on Discovery Plus or is it going to go on Mother Trend? And I think it, it went to Mother Trend and I'm, I'm speaking about things I don't really know. So um, I look <laughs> forward to getting angry email. Um, I, I feel like Mother Trend said, hey, you know, we brought this property um, for, we, we brought it to life first and, and we're really um, bullish about, about doing this reboot. So we're going to have it on the motor trend uh, on demand first. Um, there, there could be different iterations of it down the road. Um, but uh, we shot from the, the show shot from February to August. And then there was uh, several months of editing. And then the, the show was, Hey, is it going to, there is a tambourine standby, please. <laughs> You're going. In the morning. Bye. Literal one of our stunt drivers. One of Actual our stunt drivers is leaving. Uh, we we just have some great people. Anyway, uh, uh, Discovery Plus uh, was was launching in uh, February or at the end of January, and so it was kind of like Motor Trend is going to launch Top Gear at the same time. So there's still some weird intra network um, synergy going on. Uh, which is why this first season took so long to uh, come to fruition. Um, but uh, we decided to jump right back into season two to keep the momentum going and taking what we've learned on the first season and applying it to season two and just making it even better. So you're going full snowball effect. We are going full snowball effect. We pushed the rock up the hill and then it snowed. And now it's going back down the hill. <laughs> Un so unlike any of the large european suvs <laughs> like like uh you know like a, a lada or a uh <laughs> we were just talking about ladas <laughs> of course you were of course you were it's, it's I, friday of course you were i constantly browse the classifieds but at six foot four i'm worried i don't fit in a neva i have to say when i met you i was you know you say you're six four and i'm like yeah yeah sure and then I meet you uh, in the parking lot of a barbecue joint in Kansas City, and I'm like, "Holy shit, you really are six four. <laughs> like, I, I hurt my my neck hurt by the end of our time together because I was looking up all the time. And I slouch too. Yeah, we need to talk about your posture. So I am going I to been continue on in years. <laughs> and maintain my championing and uh, pushing for a collective automotive journalist or at least universe backed lot of neva project car uh car of the traveling pants type thing <laughs> ross wants us to get a lot of neva and share it yeah if we spend five thousand dollars among 20 of us to get this thing going and then just take turns with it i think that would be the funniest thing ever or at least so you have fun. to so okay the five grand is good but then you have to factor in transport as well right because mm, you're well, well, you're in Connecticut. You know, Chris is in Kansas City. Sure, uh, but I drive it to Chris, area. and I take a I take a fifty dollars flight back. Yeah, but then how do I drive it? So well, the the crappy part is, are you no really going to, there? And Ross, are you really going to fly Spirit? 
for a lot of Neva, I will fly Spirit. <laughs> They'll let Actually, you check it. No, I take that back. I mean, yeah. It's a fifty dollars check no. fee for the Neva. I will. I will no, there will be. Yes, yeah, no, no it's no, it's fifty dollars if you check it ahead of time. If you show up right. to the airport with your Lada, Spirit's like, hey, two hundred fifty bucks, exactly. and then you're like, and then Ross is like, well, I want to die at Pepsi too, and yeah. you're like ten more bucks. Two hundred seventy-five dollars. So, that'll be. Yes, two hundred seventy-five dollars. <laughs> And you get the seven and a half uh, milliliter can. You don't get a full twelve ounce. Like, oh no, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and you know, if you want the top of that can clean, it's going to be another fifteen bucks for an alcohol wipe. Have you been on a flight since all of this? I have not. I have not been on a flight. In fact, the last flight I was on uh, was mid March. I had flown to Austin again. This is all in the March issue of Mother Trend magazine, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, featuring Top Gear America. Behind the scenes, uh, I'm Derek Powell, and this is our pitch. Um, so my last, not NPR. My, my last fight <laughs> was that. It's, it's not NPR. <laughs> You're oh, wait, tagging wait, wait. Yeah. Your, your phrases like it's an NPR. This is an NPR? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to Fresh Air. I'm Derek Powell, and I'm pitching motor trends. Um, Welcome to Fresh Air. That's pretty accurate lives. right there. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jeff Glucker, by the way, says, tell those dum-dums I say hi. <laughs> tell Jeff we say hi, dum-dum. <laughs> uh, now I'm not writing a post. So, <laughs> uh, Chris says. You will. <laughs> says, I'm deleting yeah. my draft. Chris and says, I- <laughs> fight me. <laughs> what, what's the most, uh, what's the most Chris and or Ross response to Jeff right now? Would tell me that? a dum-dum? Uh, no, tell him to finish the wombat. Yes. That's finishing the one. The worst part of that was, did you see the, uh, somebody took it from Twitter. I saw it on Twitter today and put it in, uh, Camille put it in Slack. Yes. Somebody finished a wombat with an AMG yes. engine in it. Which is, which is much me. more ambitious than Jeff's Jeff legend <sighs> project. <laughs> Does Derek know the history of the wombat? Probably. I- I, some capacity. I, I, this is all new. I, it was not on the outline, so I'm in <laughs> uncharted territory here. Uh, Jeff has a uh, Mercedes wagon. I want to say it's late '80s, early '90s. He wanted to put a Hemi in it to redo the Daimler Chrysler. Uh, <laughs> a merger and, of equals. Yes, uh, but turns so out he, he had the Hemi source. He bought a five seven, like yeah. an early, early like 2004 Ram 1500 Hemi. But then there were steering box complications that were. Does just... he? You said a wagon. Yes, I think it's a like either late seventies or early eighties. I think it's older than than you think. The problem is, is it... we, we haven't seen it in years. No, it is may it... not even exist. You it said exists. it's an E class. Oh, uh, um... I, I don't know. It's it's been in the works so long that he bought that other Mercedes sedan. <clears throat> And then sold that, and then bought the Montero all in the time that this thing still hasn't even run. Wow. So, well, so... I, I think he just needs to keep working on that wombat. <laughs> it's a 1984 Benz 300 TD. Yep, S123. He yep. goes no, and I could have told him this. It would not fit. It won't. It won't clear that roof or that that hood. So it's, it's, it's too tall. So he said he sold the Hemi. It doesn't yep. fit. He sold the um, Hemi, and now I think he's just waiting to LS swap it. Oh, well, that's original. <laughs> he is no longer worried about originality here. He just wants a fun, functioning oh, Mercedes wagon. I really can't wait until Jeff hears this podcast, and the next time I see him at Motor Trend, he's just going to like push me down the stairs. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jeff doesn't listen he to is, us. <laughs> nope, he doesn't listen to us. We're on his channel. Uh, that's his why we have him channel, as a guest. But, yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I will. I, okay, so just to, to bring the conversation back, uh, I have not flown. Last time I flew was on the way back from Austin, where we were shooting the fourth episode of Top Gear America. Um, and, and I got an upgrade because nobody else was on the plane. Um, <laughs> and I've been grounded ever since. I, I have no interest in getting on a tiny little tube uh, with other people until this pandemic is under control. It was bad. Yeah, I will. I will oh, drive myself so everywhere. Sad. I won't even take public <laughs> transportation. I, I took the subway down downtown LA, and you know I'm fully masked up, 
and and keeping my distance from people but uh, on the subway it it's so unpredictable uh, people are not wearing their masks or they're wearing them beneath their noses um you know it's kind of like holding a condom in your hand while you're having sex yeah and i just because <laughs> your nose is not attached to your respiratory system at all thank you <laughs> or your dick <laughs> or your dick and uh different kind of mucus and um yeah i i i i i i won't do any i, I won't do any mass <laughs> transit oh there's a knock um, at my door let's let's see who it is oh man <laughs> hi i have started uh, this is going well you're not going to that's okay it's a it's an audio podcast oh, okay. it's also it's video What's that? So it's also sometimes video, and by sometimes I mean it's also video. Um, <laughs> it, okay, so we have we have. Can I can I introduce you? Sure. Okay, so we have Don Fanning Moore, who is a producer on Top Gear, along with me, and uh, I, I have known Don for about ten years. Uh, we used to work in commercial production together, and she is just a mastermind when it comes to taking difficult creative and breaking it down and making it feasible um you know and again if if i'm hijacking any of your outline please let me know we're good it's like okay eric you know the way this is there is we have an outline that's just a like nonsense way for us to get the a to b okay okay um i i just you know i'm i'm trying to be respectful of your time because <laughs> you're good you know, appreciate it chris your central time and ross you know you should be in bed so, yeah but tomorrow's saturday um, and he doesn't have to work so we're good uh, yeah. No, Which number are we getting up, Don? Uh, yeah, we're getting five? we're getting up at five. Uh, we're filming in Yay. outside of Park City, but that's five so, mountain uh, time. Oh. So, <laughs> come on, Chris. <laughs> that's <laughs> when I when I was in Utah and uh, we were doing those national parks in October. Uh, we'd get up early, but every morning when I would set the alarm, I'd be like, "Well, it's an hour ahead," so I'm just gonna think about it being an hour ahead, so I wouldn't actually. Oh my work. God, you sound like my mom. <laughs> there's a reason your mom and i get along <laughs> oh it's it's it, we'll go an hour we'll go one hour and she's like oh it's time for bed i'm like mom we, yeah yeah it's a lot so I, I don't know if you can hear don i hope you can um i've i've traveled all over the west coast with her she is um is she walking away? Are you coming can, back? Can she hear Derek. us? You, because Derek, you're you're wearing headphones. Can she hear us? I can now. Yes. Okay. There we go. Went, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she's embarrassed because so she thinks I only compliment her when I've been drinking. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> true. But the com no. well, yeah. the compliments are are well earned, well deserved. She is a wonderful producing partner. Um, she makes Top Gear America is our, already, working on Top Gear America is already a joy and working with her makes it even better. Oh, ditto. <laughs> ditto. Um, so if you have any questions. Oh no, Derek's the internet. Derek is frozen, oh no. <laughs> it's not me this time. Oh. Are you back? Are you still there? Yeah, no, the, the Wi-Fi died for a second. Yeah, it died You're hard. back. Okay. <laughs> cool. I, I saw your connection is disconnected. I'm like, that was the most <laughs> articulate thing I, I said all night. Um, <laughs> so Don is here. And I'm glad. So Chris, I know there's no echo, but I'm glad you get to edit this before it goes live. Yep. Um, we will be happy to answer any questions that you might have for Top Gear uh, America. <sighs> I, I can't promise that we can answer all of them since we are under a shroud of production. Um, but we will try. Fair enough. I my my only question was like, was Dax's van planned? Was it planned to be overweight and have the powertrain not be able, or was that just no. a happen happy circumstance? So here's the thing about about Top Gear as a whole, and a lot of people think that it's all produced, it's all scripted, it's all you know planned in advance, and I can tell you it's not. Um, that was real. <laughs> that was real. That was real. Couldn't you see the camera? Oh shit! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on in, give him a minute. I I'm not gonna lie. I am nerdy enough that every now and then in a shot, I'm like, "Oop, there's that camera in the background. They couldn't mm -hmm. get that one out." Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, sometimes you can't. It's the the money and time is too worth it. Yeah. Um. And so the that van. Um. 
you guys knew there'd be a Bravo. So the Quadravan, <laughs> it, it, it had a 460. You know, that 460 was mounted to a four-wheel drive system. That mm-hmm. 460 probably hadn't run in years. It has an inadequate cooling system. It was 8,000 feet up in Flagstaff. Um, and it had a, a waterbed in back with... Right. <laughs> Right, which is a water's eight and a half pounds a gallon. Like, how much is water? It's a hundred gallons. We didn't do the math. We didn't want to know. What are you talking <laughs> about, Ross? Um, math. Come on. Anyway, um, all I know Touché. is that it took me a, an hour and a half to fill it up at a truck stop gas station. <laughs> an hour yeah. and a half. Um, Ross, I can send you the video of filling it up uh, in time lapse because you have an iPhone. Touche. Um, <laughs> Chris doesn't. Um, so we're not, uh, probably not. Yeah, transport. Not. Transport was like we're not, we're not, we're not insured to transport a van with a water bed in back. You're gonna have to drive it to set. Is that and something so, you're supposed to disclose? I look. Here's the thing. If you're um, trying to do it right. If you're, but that's the thing. It's like we want we want the hosts to get themselves, and they want yeah. we want them to paint themselves in the corners, <laughs> and get, get into difficult out. situations, and find their way out. And and I, I have to tell you, if we tried the script, all of that stuff, it would just fall flat. Yeah. You know, Dax is an incredible driver. He is so good. Yeah. He is so so good. And um, and he understands. Timing. He understands he look. He comes from a filmic background. Um, you know, he, he directed one of my favorite movies of all time. Which it one? Run. Uh, <laughs> run. I actually saw it the day it opened in the theaters. <gasps> Me too. Oh my god. No, it was more enjoyable than it should have been. Um, it, it, it had the it had a sixty seven Lincoln. Come on. It did. It, it did. Hit and run hits because every car person watching it is like, this is a Dax's excuse to play with his toys. Hundred percent. So was so was chips. So was chips. Um, so chips has a, a scene did, in chips where my dad will stop me every time it's on to discuss that scene. Oh boy! It's the so, uh, getting Dax to the restroom scene. I I blacked out that movie, but I'll yes. take the word for it. Oh my god! Okay, so follow up about the van. <laughs> did the airbrush on the van cost as much as the van and whose idea was it for the airbrush? So it was Dax's idea. Really? He, he wanted oh. that. And <laughs> that's the other thing. Yeah, he blew his, he literally he blew his, so when we say, when the hosts say that they have like a $5,000 budget, they literally do have a $5,000 budget. So Dax wanted that and it was a, it was a great, <laughs> It was a that great- was his only stipulation. <laughs> What's that? Was that his only stipulation? I, he wanted like a seventies kind of yeah. mod, you know. Seventy sports car van. Yeah, thank you. I, I... <laughs> Checks out. Yep, seventies porn star van is perfect mm-hmm. for what he the fan was. Porn, porn yeah. star van. And, and Kristen was gracious enough to allow it. Yeah, and, and, and she was on board, and if you were to ever meet her, you would understand that their dynamic is just, it, it works. They it both works. have a great sense of humor. Absolutely. Yeah, it's Big time. so, so good. And The so, ability to laugh at yourself is huge. Yeah. And you have to, because Everything. look, we don't, we don't want them to have perfect vehicles, and I think that's always, it's always a challenge for a bunch of car people getting together. You know, the instinct is to just, put the pedal down and, and just drive the nicest stuff possible. But the humor and the interest comes in these cars that are far from perfect and have been modded in some weird way and ah. then break down unexpectedly. And so for that van to break down the way it did. So here's the thing, like I was saying, Dax is a great driver. And the first few episodes, Dax was like, I have this in the bag. I'm, I, I'm the, I have the best cred. Yeah, Jeff is <laughs> British, whatever. But like, um, his cars kept crapping out on him and he realized that it's not just you know the best bang for the buck it's 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 mm-hmm. which one's going to last the longest and, and which one's going to provide the most fun I mean Hot Rods is a perfect example did they watch it today? Did uh, Hot Rods is out? Yeah we can talk it, about it 
It wasn't, oh, it, is? it wasn't out when I had lunch. So <laughs> it's out now. I just saw it. I'm going to watch it later. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Rob picked wisely. He picked uh, something that is completely uh, reliable. I mean, cops have been using it for years and years and years and years and years. Dax decided that, so, yeah. That so 4. wait, Derek, before you, before you yeah. delve you into guess. it, what, what's the premise of this? Because I... First to admit it, I haven't even seen what the episode is. Okay, so uh, Hot Rods is is kind of like based on the premise of uh, Hot Rod is such a, a huge, wide ranging term, right? You know, mm -hmm. a hot rod to you, uh, Chris might be in uh, an LS in a <laughs> in an FJ, right? Uh, Ross Ross in a hot rod to you might be Mercedes wagon. <laughs> Yeah, or or you know Ross to you, it might be closing down Merritt Parkway and uh, taking some kind of like crazy BMW on it. You don't need to close the Merritt. Oh, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, oh. allegedly. Actually, allegedly. the the fastest I've ever driven on the Merritt Parkway was the day after Trump was elected, and I'm pretty oh. sure everybody was driving in anger. So allegedly, I'll, allegedly, yeah, yeah, yeah. allegedly. Allegedly. Um, <laughs> so, good for you to drive angry. Oh, seriously, right? It yeah. was so like, full like, angry. If I could drive, if I could drive like overseas, I would. I could, <laughs> I could put my all road in level five and just drive across the Atlantic to France. I would. Anyways. Um so I'm assuming so Rob hot rods. Is is the host picked something that was that represented their personality? And so Rob chose a, a decommissioned cop car with a uh, with with the exhaust sawzalled off and all the interior pulled out uh jethro after the mod. they tested it first oh without all, everything being stripped down oh really they came and uh chased them. Pulled them over. Yeah. yeah 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 um and so jethro had a mini cooper um because you know he's, he's british and a ah. mini is ostensibly british current mini or yeah it was like which generation mini? It was a, I think it was a first gen supercharged mini. Okay. So oh, like 2006 ish? R53? 56? What you said. Three. R, I yeah. think R53 is first. That one. Yeah. I, I just know it as the 1.6 supercharged. Oh, the one um, with the plastic parts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Co the water Co pump's actually right plastic. Yeah. The zone. water pump's plastic and it also lives in the cooling tank. Yes. Again, the BMW influence. <laughs> um, one of my friends actually came like, over. Before, Jared, sorry one of my friends came over and he texted me like one of my best friends had one of the supercharged minis and he texted me when he was like five minutes out from coming to visit three years ago and his car was full autocross prep on like re71s and everything and he texted me nothing except bring paper towels it's like <laughs> what does that mean and i went down to the garage and i met him in the garage and it just had blown all of the coolant out and he was like, yeah, dude, I, I don't even know after place. I was like, how do you design that? Anyways, moving on. So, uh, and then Dax uh, decided to bring a Cadillac Fleetwood, um, but add nitrous to it. Oh, God. Um, okay. uh, you know what? If you can find another IPA, that should be good. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Don. Uh, uh, ooh, uh, I'll try, I don't know. Just a hazy IPA. Oh. Um, like I said, great producing partner. Um, yeah, I can apologize later. I'm the creepy guy who viewed her on LinkedIn. <laughs> Wait, what? It, when you <laughs> said her awesome. name before, I did a Google search. The first thing that came up was LinkedIn. So that's the link I clicked on to but, see but you should. I mean, Don's you, background. Yeah, you should. I mean, she's got such a great background. She's, yeah. She's a head of the Planned Parenthood Committee in, in Southern California. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, she stays busy. She's uh, she's really, really great, and um, you know her talents are very uh, widespread all over the place. Um, so, um, Dak thought his supercharged L or his nitrous boosted LT1 Fleetwood would just toast the other two when it came to doing a a top speed run, a top speed race uh, in the desert on a dry lake bed. And I'm not going to give away what happened, but let's just say that Dax 
realize that more power isn't always the, the best plan of action. And so um, it's really great to see the host kind of explore the different worlds of cars, both new and used, and and just kind of like navigate this world. And I think it's great for them because they come from such diverse backgrounds uh, of cars mm-hmm. that uh, that this really that this really challenges a different part of their brain when it comes to to, to how they interact with automobiles. I I've been enjoying trying to wrap my head around Rob Cordry as a Boy Scout. <laughs> Dude, he is so prepared. Like he is. Because he it's, comes it, to set, he knows. He, he know like he 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 contributes a lot to the reviews that he does, and we go back and forth. And he is just he definitely was a great Boy Scout because their motto is what always be prepared, yep. and he mm-hmm. is always prepared. In the overlanding episode, when everybody yeah. got together the first time to talk about what they had brought to the episode he was joking about being a boy scout and then as they did their individual little bits in the cars as you know they took their first little drive into the mountains he was just rattling stuff off and it went from like oh he's just joking to oh my god this guy's not fucking around like (laughs) he's the only one that would actually survive out here (laughs) he absolutely would he absolutely would and and if there is a zombie apocalypse you want to be in rob's safe zone (laughs) <laughs> really do if there's a zombie apocalypse i wouldn't mind being where they and you were for that episode dude it was so great it was really it was just beautiful it was that lava rock floor is just millions of years old um the just the contrast with the pine trees and then of course the arizona, arizona skies and light is just just really really awesome and it was just it was so beautiful can you divulge in what you used for camera cars for that episode? Uh, yeah, I think it was a Suburban. <laughs> really? Yeah. We had a Suburban. Oh, we have, we have more Top Gear people. So, <laughs> and... Oh my God, I forgot your fucking beer. <laughs> what? I forgot your beer. You forgot my beer. <laughs> You want to be on camera? Cardinal or you want to like hang it? <laughs> this, this is literally the early days it's, of it's, smoking it's, tire. It's Seriously, <laughs> you guys, we have a great guest star who just showed up. Um, can I introduce you? Sure. Uh, we oh. have Jamie Callum, who is the executive in charge of Top Gear America. She is the best person ever, and I am so proud <laughs> that that I, I she is my boss. I just I love it so much. Um, here she is. Um, Hi, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank Derek. Ask again, guys. I think Ross said thank you for coming said, on the show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining. <laughs> no, it was not a bad to meet today. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a suburban for the Overland episode? Uh, yeah, for the for the cars. Uh, it, we just had a suburban. Sorry, Boo. That's all right. <laughs> I got my IPA. <laughs> it's uh it's got it's got the walrus on here. Nice. Yeah. Like one second, I thought it was Groom Reaper, and that would be a very different kind of beer. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we actually saw Grim Reaper in the Utah State Store today, but we didn't get it. <laughs> the glory of Utah. Was it like three yeah. percent alcohol, two point five percent? So you can get up to four percent at the store at, at like grocery stores, and anything harder than that, you have to go to the state store. Man, even Kansas is better than that now. It, it's better. You know, you thought it used to be like, I don't know, you had to wear magic underwear to go buy alcohol. Yeah, and it's it's so much better now. They really are magic underwear. Yeah. We were in line and, you know, <laughs> Jamie is ageless. She looks amazing. <laughs> And, uh, you know, then there were the old farts behind her, like me and, and some other producer. And, and they asked for all of our IDs. And even though, I was, even though I was the one buying them, it doesn't matter, it's locked. So just the passengers have to, everyone in that store has to have an ID. Did have you have, to, did you do the like millisecond pause where everybody like looks around and you're like, really? 
Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I, I, I almost wanted to be like, you guys, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I should not be trying to buy alcohol at this I'm age. only 18. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you busted me. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Made me feel better. They have a really good wine, um, like, inventory. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a like, really, really well-stocked good. store. Like, I found my favorite chili that I- Where is it? In Boston. Is it? Oh. Ross wants to know what it is. Hmm? It's okay, Ross. You broke up. I couldn't hear you. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. You can ask more <laughs> top tier questions. Because uh, now that Jamie's here, she can uh, she can answer with authority the things that we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so many of my questions were just the Overland episode. Yeah. You can. Oh, and by the way, Rob did have a seatbelt, but it was tucked behind the seat, and he didn't discover it until. He climbed the mountain and I saw the footage and I was like, oh shit, he does not have a seatbelt on. Well, he's still with us. So. And I ran over it didn't... and by that, I went out. So, and then but it's still I went in. I, no, and then I got, I, I looked into having seatbelt comps to put on exactly. Yeah. That was fun. But they I, let you wear it. Well, the it didn't go terribly wrong. So. Yeah. At least there's that. But he was the boss on that episode. Yeah. Well, Again, he went with you the just, Toyota. You never know because you see, you see that big you see that big van with a 460 V8. Yeah, and then you see Rob. But Chris, I'm sure you saw it and you're like, oh yeah, that that Toyota is just bulletproof. It's gonna go everywhere. It, I mean, it's gonna rock it. The only yeah, thing right I was right. concerned about was when Rob started listing lifts and things like that. I was wondering. Mm -hmm who had done the work on the lift kind of thing. Like I was expecting suspension failure for Rob, but no, it's Did stuck he, together. Was it bought exactly like that or was it modified? Because it had FJ Cruiser wheels. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. And yeah, tires and suspension. Um, you know, okay. Like we, we were- Just on his though. Because it was so heavy. Just on his. Like what we were saying no, before. Well, the Z too, you know. Was supposed to have the fucking what do you call it? I don't know the name. I, uh, you, the you'll fucking have to <laughs> write write it out on a whiteboard. Dictionary <laughs> <laughs> here, Don. Now, yeah. now it's a production meeting. It's gone from podcast. To <laughs> <laughs> this is now the next episode of Overlanding. I'll send Dr. you my America. retainer. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's very <Yeah>. small. <laughs> what happened to yeah. that Z after you guys were done with it? Yeah, Fox Shocks or something like that. Yeah. They were supposed to be Fox Shocks. There you go. Fox Shocks. There's your sound bite, you guys. <laughs> but we're going to take that and run with it. $3,500 for those fucking sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it paid off. The Z oh my was God. my favorite part of the episode because it was the epitome of go with the lightest thing that'll work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And, it, it, and it did. It, Except it's like. For <laughs> Yeah, like, and Dax was the heaviest thing. Like, and, well, and the waterbed did not help. Not at all. Not at all. So I did the math. It's either like 600 to almost 2,000 pounds of water in the back of that truck. Oh, you did the math since yeah. earlier? I think it's like 1,000. Uh, yeah, it's... Let's Depending on how big it was. Not that not that the van was light to begin with, but adding 1,000 <laughs> pounds of moving weight yeah, to it is... It's like a waterbed. It's like a waterfall going down the lava. Yeah. Yeah, that... It when they started lot. stabbing it, that was actually very I funny. Loved it. Uh, <laughs> something that they foreshadowed that without having any idea they have to have it. Yeah, because again, Dax got in that car, and you know, I I'm very familiar with that engine in that van. That 460 is is really bulletproof, but because it's such a huge, such a huge engine, it requires a lot of cooling. And that that engine had a lot of inadequate cooling, and it had that was the whole issue the whole time. It, it overheated all the time, yeah. and to the point where it just it would not turn over. And so, well, an engine with cooling trouble, the best thing to do for it is just add a thousand pounds of weight for it to carry. You know what we should have done? I just <laughs> we should have run the cooling system through the waterbed. <laughs> through the waterbed? Oh my god. <laughs> You should have gotten one. You know how all the Overlanders have those like refrigerators 
in the trunk yeah. or in the second row seats. You should have circulated the water through that. Or like the Hellcat. Yeah. yeah. Or like the Hellcat has its yes. own like. No, the demon with the cooling, the air charger or whatever that shit is. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. No. So really though, what happened to the, the Z after it was finished being beaten on? Is it just like in a lot somewhere for like future yeah, production? We wrecked it for a while on the way out of the facility, and then it got on a truck, and we never saw it again. Yeah, True. Oh boy, <laughs> somebody has got. Yeah. So back to the garage, no, he owned them. He owned he the he, flip on yeah. them. And Who's he? It went, back. it went back to where the that's right. the, so the Z, the, the Toyota, and the van. And the van. All and the of them. They still all. exist. They we they might them. still exist. But we were like, good riddance. Yeah. But they're yeah. not just like being wholesaled somewhere and oh somebody's signing God. the title going, oh my God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Call Billy at action. He'll know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like the van is going to be something that like we're going to see it like, uh, I can't think of the auction and Barrett Jackson someday. Barrett? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like the mural going by the, the stand. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Sorry, we were having a production meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do what you have to do. <laughs> Someone just realized what time it is. <laughs> Someone just realized an idea that, that might turn into well, an episode. Talk, <laughs> it sounds about Thank right for us. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Yep. Bye, Jamie. Um, okay. Uh, coming up. <laughs> oh, cool. We, we have more guests coming. Um, cool. Yeah. So in the interim, Derek, how are your personal vehicles doing? Oh boy. I want to know uh, about boy. your your service. So so you know, I, I don't know if everybody knows this. I know we talked about the all road the last time I was on the podcast. Spent a lot of and, time talking about the all road. Um, right? That's what I think too. Yeah. And <laughs> and so so I we we did two episodes in a quarry last season and Don got to see the prowess of the all road. Um in 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 full like regalia yeah full off road mode <laughs> every mode uh one to four uh I she drove was, it even yeah she drove it even and uh I could not convince her to buy one <laughs> Mark why is that Don Don's moving up the list so <laughs> right so, yeah <laughs> Don's getting a maki you guys I Fully on board. I was configuring a Rivian, Rivian one R one S today. Uh, Mache. Yeah, we I drove past. I saw my first one this week. That it was parked next to a Bronco Sport, and they both look actually really good. Yeah, yeah, they really do. Um, and they so the work. Other, what was funny is that the um, the, uh, the the tent on top of the Z was on loan from. Uh, Tough stuff, I believe. Tough stuff, yep. Mm -hmm. And um, the tent is just big enough that it does not fit in an SUV. Like you have to put it on a roof rack. Oh, it won't even fit like that. <laughs> like, like it this won't. Way. It won't. I had a Highlander oh. hybrid, and I, it was two inches too short diagonally. I could not get it in. Um, that sounds wrong. Um, hey. Hey. Yep, yep, yep. I know. We, we put um, the E for explicit. We're good. <laughs> okay, good. And I don't know if you heard that, but Don said it wouldn't fit in my Lexus RX either because it's the same car. Don <laughs> <laughs> platform sharing, and I love her even more yeah. dearly for it. Um, so, so I was on my way to uh, the the garage that owned the uh, the vehicles that we just talked about to pick up the tent to take it back to Tough Stuff, and um, I'm I'm I, I've gotten off the 101 and I'm driving on Reseda or something like that. And all of a sudden the revs just like go up to six and come back down and then go up to four and come back down. And I realized the transmission flipping. I'm like, huh, this is weird. So I pull over, I turn off the car, I turn it back on because you know, that's what you do when you have a technical problem. And it got back in gear and it was fine, but then it got into third gear and it, it started flipping again. I was like, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take the chance of something bad happening with this tent on there. So I called AAA, they came to pick it up. Um, my friend, Michael, uh, who I met at, at Laguna Seca when I towed his S4 back uh, <laughs> after the slave cylinder went, 
full circle, he picked me up and took me home. And he was like, what are you going to do? I was like, I don't know. I know this day was coming for a long time, but I don't know. Um, so, so a couple of months go by and, you know, I posted that thing you saw, of like, you know, my poor all road, wah, wah. And um, then my friend Chet, uh, a, another guy that I met at an Audi club event at the track, he started a GoFundMe. This was not my, this was my, not my idea. I had nothing, I had nothing to do with it. But all of a sudden, I'm, I get the, these emails of like, this person contributed this, this person contributed this. <laughs> Don Fanning Moore contributed money towards fixing my all road. Well, oh my <laughs> God. Yeah, no. Oh wait, that. no, no, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Don was not on the GoFundMe. She paid me for a, 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 a job that I did. Uh, writing a treatment. For a writing a show. treatment, yeah. For, for, for a, a feature, which is again, how we met. Um, and she, she, even on the check, she wrote all road fund. Um, and Venmo doesn't have a comment section. Yeah, screw Venmo, man. <laughs> so, so again, and then, and then Mark Donkey from Audi called me one day and he goes, what can I do? And I, you know, I've been bugging Mark since before I got into this business. Like when I heard that there was a chance that the C7 RS6 might come stateside, I bombarded him with email. And so, you know, I've been on his radar for quite some time. And so I said to him, I said, you know, short of finding a new transmission for this 15 year old car, really not much. And he goes, okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> and a couple of, a couple of weeks later, he called me back and he said, we, you won't believe this, but we found one. And it's on its way from wherever it was. I think it was, where did they store the Ark of the Covenant? <laughs> oh my God. Sure. Where so he put an intern on it and had that intern do everything he could to find it, right? I don't know. Like Mark's pretty resourceful. Um, That's wild. Yeah. Like, so there's this, there, there, there's another guy at Audi, Ian Avilia, um, who oversees parts and um you know just just kind of maintaining older Audis as well and uh, he was definitely on the hunt so i think he and and mark worked together in tandem to make that happen That's why he's i was i was twisting in the wind because yeah. in the meantime i had tested the new all road and i had tested the rs6 and they're both great but they weren't my car they weren't my car um and so I, uh, I decided to put the, the coin towards that and got it. I got Hi. it. I got a new transmission. And uh, we have another top tier guest coming, by the way. <laughs> um, I'll just finish. Well, I'll finish my all road story. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sharing and, your, uh, your, your engine shot. Oh, holy fuck. Yeah. Did you mean Ark so, of the Covenant like in the Raiders of the Lost Ark sense? Or. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just check, so, just check, just check. Oh wait, is that a screenshot from my? That's a screenshot from my. Uh, my oh no, no. I see. I see. I see. It's your Twitter page. God. Yeah, I know, but I saw the that... Google Docs and I was like, "Are you like? Are you doing the production <laughs> meeting as well? You're at your America." Uh, so, someday. Why would they do that? Oh my God. So. Oh, we can go back to that. We can go back to that picture for a second. So I, I figured, like, since I was going to do the transmission, I'm going to do the the timing chains as well because that engine is notorious uh, for timing chain failures at 150,000 or so miles, and I had 140,000 miles on my car. And as you can see, some of as the chains go around, you can see kind of like these nylon pieces, um, and those are the timing chain guides. So you've got a metal chain on nylon pieces and it's kind of like, Hey, Audi, if you have a metal chain, why do you have nylon? Right. Nylon, nylon wears metal yeah. tends to not wear, but nylon is inherently something that wears. Yeah. And the, the tensioners as well, they are hydraulically actuated. So you need good oil pressure. And so if you don't change your oil on the regular, uh, the, the sludge kind of that gums up the tensioner uh, lines and the tensioners fail. So, I thought I'd do it. Dawn is losing interest. She is going to <laughs> still 
She's going to refill her margarita and come back. That's is that an like interference like engine or no? It is an interference engine, right? Thank you. What was your question? Interference? Uh, it is an interference engine. So you will bork the valve if you uh, uh, yes. if, okay. if, if it jumps if it jumps a tooth. So I thought, you know what, I, I, I have to do the timing chains because it's just stupid to do the transmission and not do the timing chains while you're in there. And as you can see from the picture, there's a lot of mud in that frame rail. Uh, <laughs> two, two sheared off motor mounts. Um, and this was from the quarry where we were filming the last two episodes of season one. Um, but nice. look, my car is never clean like that underneath. I am. Chris knows that I take this off road. Ross, you've seen the pictures. Mm -hmm. Like I, I treat this car, uh, I, or I, I, I use this car. <laughs> like, how would you say it, David? Uh, like, why was what it was built to do? Yeah, I, I use it what it was built to do, and it, it, the fact that it lasted this long going off roading and towing my cars is just a testament to why I should keep it on the road for another. I mean, Audi is not gonna make a car where you can raise it to go off-roading. Audi's not gonna make a car where you press a button and it raises to go off-roading if you're not gonna go off-roading. They're telling you to take it off-road. Yeah. So the one, this is the one guy who does. And it's, look, it's like a German Land Rover. And if you don't use it, <laughs> if you do not use it, it's going to just mm -hmm. wither and die. Right. So the more you beat it up, the better it is. Yep, it, it really is. It, it really is. So, like so it's an exotic. It is. It is. Um, so uh, we, um, I, I've got David Silverman here, who is the senior producer of Top Gear America. David uh, has also worked on the Grand Tour. He was a producer on Top Gear USA. Um, he has been on many iterations of this show. He knows so much inside and out. Um, he is the person that finds all of these amazing cars that we mod. Um, so if you have any obscure questions, uh, <laughs> David would know them inside and out. And funny enough, most of the ones you have, I may not, and then I'll look at Derek and answer them. <laughs> <laughs> We're really good team. Oh, you, you guys will love this. You guys will love this. Um, I don't, I don't know what shirt I was wearing last time, but I have this, I have this uh, Land Rover shirt. It's like a Series One, yeah, Series Two. I, th I, th I think it's a Series One with the Gorillas or something. Right? Yeah, like evolution. It, it just says "Stay Wild" or something like that. Oh, that's the only one. And I was, I was in. Um, oh, that's right, the gorilla. Yeah. So I was in. Uh, I was in Austin. I didn't know anyone. I didn't know anyone on the crew when I joined Top Gear America. You were in the lobby, sitting. I was sitting in the lobby, on the chairs, and I fucking saw a guy with a Land Rover shirt. Yeah, and David came <laughs> over and goes, "That's a great shirt." Like. He didn't know me from anyone. He was like, that's a great shirt. And that was his opening line. And it just, I, I knew right then that it was going to be an amazing experience. And it really has. Weird how that works. Yeah, it really is. Um, and and it, it's true, though. It's like, I, I can come up with some creative idea, and David can tell me why it will or will not work um, in a matter of seconds uh, because he has done this show for such a long time. So, sure. Is, mm. is it getting harder now to do automotive themed television? You know, in COVID or in Who's going to be listening to this? <laughs> yeah, who's <laughs> the market? Yeah, why we're talking. Gen oh. Generally, <laughs> general off road enthusiasts. So. Oh, off road. Oh, so this is a. It's. Yeah, yeah. So the, it, it's. COVID obviously has made it. COVID has been more challenging than any thing I've ever done, not with this show or any show, but what has been the most challenging because we can't fly anywhere. We can drive now, but, you know, 11 hours driving. So <laughs> you can't, like, if you've got an amazing place out in Texas or Colorado Pike or Pete. Florida or Pike Peak, we, we can't do it. Even if you have, if, like, we could be given well, we can, a rally car and... <laughs> We could be given a rally car and all this great shit, and they're like, "Yeah, come out, you know, to somewhere Illinois, whatever, whatever." To this, it, we couldn't do it, you know. So COVID has really, like, here's a perfect example. Last right. season, we were gonna do an episode with the Bugatti. 
that we were going to take from Nassau basically down to the Florida Keys. And we were going to we oh, wow. do the top mm -hmm. speed run. We were going to do some cool stuff all set up. Then COVID hit and we couldn't fly. So we had to go to a parking lot and film an episode. So it really. Oh, we haven't done that. So it's, <laughs> you know, that's, we went to my driveway and filmed an episode. I mean, we went to Judy's and Jamie's driveway. The oh, first episode. oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Cameron was in her driveway. I have to watch that again. Literally in what her driveway. Was Por it was a it Porsche. Was a Porsche it was Lisa's Porsche. And Porsche. Porsche. And, uh, and it was the Mustang. The Mach E. Oh, that was the I, I, first I, I, episode. I think it was the pilot for what? the common viewer. That was the pilot. Yeah, I mean, I think the way to put it. Yeah. Um, it, it, but we airing it out of order. So right, right. But, yeah. but in the way that most people saw it on Motor Trend, that was the pilot. Yeah, and which one is what, what was the, the supercar one? one? Where that was Super the first high, one yeah. we ever did. Where it was just like yeah, where Dak put his butt through the Mustang. Um, <laughs> the one where um he uh blew the pulley. Yeah. Yeah, the pulley on the supercharger on the GT500 blew right off it. Was what? Uh, uh, yeah, it blew right off it. But he took the off seal. all the restrictions and all the stuff, right? So how? It's not like Ford has somebody on site for a shoot like that, no. right? It, you have to like call them and say, hey, this happened? Yeah, I mean, we called, and then they we called Ford and said we were drag racing it, which they knew. We have to tell them everything we're going to do for it. They go to the car, they have to approve the creative. And yeah, I mean, he literally just, you know, used launch control, did mm -hmm. everything that you're supposed to do and didn't make a noise, but all of a sudden got no power, popped the hood, and the uh, um, the um, pressure cap in front of the pulley blew off. There was grease all over the place. Oh boy! And you know, it's just yeah, it was one of those things where it wasn't a pre-production car, but they weren't out, out yet. And mm. so they were like, "This is actually great info. Thank you." So they took the car back to the place, <laughs> and they, you know, they gave us a new car the know. next day. So that well, that's wow. really the reason for ah. Dax's switch of vehicles. That's the switch. <laughs> that's of vehicles. Right. Okay. <laughs> Yep. Is it making sense now? Yep. Oh, that yeah. connects the dots. I, uh -huh. I know. I know. They fucking brought it in the middle of nowhere in some dive hotel to you guys overnight. Yeah, that was um. Well, it's Chuck Waller, so, right? It's the only hotel near there. No, 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 no. This is Willow. Uh, Willow. This is Willow. Oh, it's Willow. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no! Wait, were you at the Mojave? Were you in Mojave or something like that? No, what's Willow? I don't know the one I don't see. That's when I drive from home. It was like fifteen. <laughs> This one, Pasadena, is so far. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 15 minutes south of Willow, whatever. Yeah. It was. It was sketchball. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was just um, meth, meth capital. Yeah. yeah. We're really lucky that they had one. Meth Willow. They had one, you know, sitting in the warehouse, and they were able to, you know, they we were able to write, drive it up the next morning. You guys had to write the story to adjust. Yeah. That was fun. The so that thing, Rob Dursing. That's oh, easy. Yeah, that was good. Good, like me, trying to learn. Rob, it's so funny because I did not like that segment. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, no, it was just would set the tone for like who yeah. Rob was yeah. and or is going to be and all that. Rob mm -hmm. is always cute. Ra yeah. Rob, in that I mean, segment, he comes good. off as the ultimate dad. Yes, like I just can't get it to, to yeah. like yeah. just. There's such a big aspect well, of a new. So what was that? What? No, I was saying there, there's such a huge aspect what? of a what? new automotive show for the automotive demographic that is setting the stage for who this person is because everybody interprets it so they like scrutinizing is over the top, you know, with oh, who yeah. they are when you, and when how you... they slot into their life and, and how they relate. When you, when you decide to launch, relaunch or reboot a flagship automotive show that is known over the entire world um and populated with three hosts um you have to make sure that the chemistry is correct you have to make sure that their individual personalities come out um and you have to be able to write to that and to speak to that in each episode and see kind of like you were saying um you know with the, the boy scout thing 
that that's a, a true personality trait that Rob has and to really embrace that and to lean into it is what makes that show special and, and, and to see those personalities come to life and to interact with interact with one another is why you watch I mean yeah the cars are characters and those are great too but you write to their personalities and yeah I mean going off what you said I mean like, there's a lot of pressure there because forget about automotive top gear is one of the most successful television brands ever and there's a lot of responsibility that goes with that and over well, 40 like countries and you know magazine publications I mean it's the presence is gigantic it's so many offshoots of it it's, and when it top gear America previously my but, well, David, David didn't even work on that one. He, he saw Top Gear America. And that <laughs> last one on BBC America was unwatchable. Yeah, yeah, that it was, was with, totally unwatchable. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was with William Fickner, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nothing with those guys. Was just no. Stuff. You said it was six episodes, so. Yeah. So yeah, that's so, all you need to say. You have to have magic underwear on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for it to work right. And what you were saying before, it's like it, it, it's true. It's you just you can't when you ask if it's when you ask David if it's getting harder to do this, you know, COVID aside, it's like there are only you you think about there are only so many stories you can tell with cars. Um, that's not true. We keep finding new stuff. Um, the location can create a story. The car can create a story. The host People can create a story. Right. Um, and so there are there are times when you know, we'll work together and we'll say, gosh, we, we, we really want to break out of this, this mold and we want to try something new. <laughs> I was like, Adam Tanner and Rutt were so good and it, they were amazing. And I, I was a little, well, you know, everyone was really disappointed that they didn't come back. So when they casted, you know, these three new guys, you know, it was just like, you know, it's kind of like you have an ex and you still are in love with them, you know, <laughs> but it just didn't so work it, out. It makes mm-hmm. it hard to love the new one. Yeah, but, yeah. but right. then... You uh, can't help but love Yeah, but then yeah. the very first episode, and I'm telling you, it wasn't even three minutes, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. These guys are fucking fantastic. There's an mm-hmm. I mean, guys. these guys are the kind of people where just give them a car on the location and they're going to make it work. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it could have been cast better. Makes our job easy-ish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> as david drinks the rest of his scotch and I'm going back for a refill. oh my god as, david's making I'm banana there. bread I still don't know. um I, I i we have completely obliterated okay. your outline sorry <laughs> it's okay but that is okay like, if you so, have if you if you have more top tier questions right. these yeah. oh sorry Right so you you were talking about the overlap and there's the overlap of like car people and adventure people and entertainment people. So is the end goal of Top Gear to like fit that little overlap of the three Venn diagrams or kind of carve out a small niche of each and make an episode appealing to each? Or are you trying to go after everybody with every episode? That's a really good, if, good question. If that made I'm any sure sense at all, it made sense in my head. I hope it made sense in like what came out of my mouth. So, Russ just created another head. production meeting. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. It's that's one of the best questions I've ever been asked. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's at the good. end of the day, we don't. When we, you know, when us three are together, you know, the other team, but you know, we're trying to make something. We don't really have that in mind. Yeah. You know, we literally mm-hmm. just try to come up with the best episode we can. Yeah. And obviously, you want everyone to watch. You know, uh, do a demographic of but you want everyone to watch. But what's so great about Top Gear is, you know, you don't have to love cars to love the show. You know, right here. you just don't. I had a little bit of love. Yeah, I mean. Now I'm a, you know. Yeah. You know, so we literally junkie. just. Yeah. We just <laughs> try to make the best, most entertaining show that we think people will like. It's, that's a great And there's question. a framework too, right? Yeah. With, there's a framework of knowing Top Gear is the brand. It's And that's right? the hard part of have, making Top Gear yeah. because it, if, held to, you, you have to work with, and, and again, I will reference uh, the March issue of <laughs> Motor Trend <laughs> Magazine. <laughs> John, I think, wait, hang on. I know, hang on. Still be a too. Okay, here we go. That's 
may I, may I refer to you? <laughs> There you go. Yeah, there we go. Which which you episode mark. of what magazine? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst comp ever. But but the thing is is like <laughs> it's it's bad. Um, it, have you seen the ones where like you go on the Mother Trend or you see the Mother Trend prom- promotions and it's like that somebody should have stopped with the Photoshop mm-hmm. like like it, an five hour, hours earlier five hours <laughs> yeah. earlier and yeah. you're like that's not even a body part yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like what is that. <laughs> So again, um, making Top Gear is hard because it's not just a car show. It's not just a buddy show. Um, you can't, you, it has to be, in, it, ha, it, it can't be, it, it can't be, um, it can't be scripted, but you still have to create parameters. Mm-hmm. Um, framework. Yeah, it, I know, that's what you said. Um, don't give me that look. Um, like I said, best co-producer ever. Um, <laughs> so it, it's like it, there are a lot of contradictions that actually work somehow. Um, and so when you're making that, you have to factor in, you know, all of the stuff that the hosts want as well because they bring well, they leave. they I mean, yeah they I bring mean, their own ideas, yeah. and and we have to service those ideas as well. And we also have to do all of this within we shoot an episode within two days. You know, we have a third day to do. You do all that shit in two days? Yeah. Again, I can refer you to the March issue. Of- <laughs> no, <I'm> kidding. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Is that one online? I got to find the link to that and put it in the show notes. Yeah, I just had a thought. Going back to what you were talking about before about making the show. You know, I honestly think one of the biggest not one of the biggest, but one of the biggest hurdles we, not all of us, have is the original, you know, with Parsons was so outstanding that it, to be able to beat what they did, besides the chemistry of the three guys, you know, the original UK top year, and the amount of money they were able to spend, I mean, some of their budgets were like feature film budgets, and we're trying to live up to that, you know, it's like, you know, it's, you know, it's like, you know, we're beer and pretzels and they're wine and cheese. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're trying to, and we'll constantly trying to live up to Big Brother, which sometimes is hard because people will be like, oh, the UK one? Like, no, the American one. Like, oh. And, you know, and we'll sometimes we'll call up, you know, different uh, different places from the country to get permits or whatever. And they're like, oh, you guys, you know, you know, we worked at Top Gear before, you broke all the rules, blah, blah, Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Wasn't us, we swear. Broke all the roots, broke broke all the cars. Yeah, and like the, the <laughs> and literally they would just like film it off permits, they'd like rip around the country essentially, different cities, and then they'd head back to the UK and we'd call and be like, Hey, we're top here, we would love to film your city. Oh, we and like, no, we're not them, we're not them, because they're totally separate. But it's trying to live up to the big brother is hard because they're so damn good. Mm-hmm. But I think I mean and they still are, they're outstanding. But I think we for the amount of money we're allowed to spend, I think we make really good TV. And this, I agree. This one's gonna get even better. Yeah. My my first reaction to the show, and from for UK, eventually the show just got to the point where it was just those three hanging out. The car, yeah. the car stuff was just also happened to be there. And watching the first couple of episodes of Dax and Rob and Jethro, I was like, all right. I pray we get enough time because they're going to have it immediately. Like the chemistry is, right. you can already see them, especially because you have two guys that have done acting and improv before too. Like yeah. Rob's a good listener. Like he's going to know how to come off the other two guys. And I was like, sweet, I'm in because these three are going to form those same bonds that we got to see mm-hmm. the big brothers develop. And that my whole, like my fear was like, oh God, please don't cancel it early because they're, this was going to be great. <laughs> Given yeah. enough time. Yeah. Given enough time. Right. The, the charm of Top Gear UK was that after the, f- maybe like by the third or fourth season, it felt like there was no script. And yeah. you can kind of already see it going there with this, where it's like, oh, they were just kind of thrown into a point of just, go have fun and go be comfortable and like we'll get to the point where it's it's, just people hanging out doing car stuff and that's kind of where it needs to be and i have to tell you 
there isn't a script. Like even though there's no script, we have an outline. Like yeah. you know, they know what they have to accomplish. But we we have no word for word script. I mean, Zach Stressel and Rob, I mean these guys, <laughs> they don't even we could give them a script and they still do their own thing. Yeah. You know, and I think what you said is exactly right. The improv has a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know. Because because again, we don't we don't want them to anticipate anything going in. You know, we want the their genuine reactions and, and how they would respond in a situation. And again, we have to make that that feel organic and 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 breathe within two days. Um, but we can't rush it. You know, we right. we can't we, we can't put them in a situation and say, okay, this is what's going to happen. Because if you do that, <laughs> then you lose the magic. And I think to your point when you said that like by the end of the original trio's uh, run, it, it felt very planned and contrived and scripted. So mm -hmm. I, I have an old man note that I I dropped on the Hooniverse audience, but I didn't really talk about it much. I'm, I don't think I wrote anything, but like the latest Grand Tour special, it could have just been the three of them driving those horrible roads of Morocco and it would have been amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, we, we wasted minutes of the special yeah. doing stuff that they were just fluff. 50% yeah. of the episode was stuff that didn't improve the episode. And I, I don't know and that. So that goes back to what I was saying about like, it's hard to come up with, with stuff that feels original and undone um, because, because there have been like 27, 28 seasons of yeah. Top Gear UK. Mm -hmm. um, and there are so many other different versions of it around the world. Um, and they all have their own take on it. So like, not only do we have to do like a new, okay, for example, you know, the, the Top Gear UK um, uh, film of like trying to destroy a Hilux. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Made the Hilux more famous than anything any other Hilux has ever done. Exactly. And exactly. And, and you think, I would love to redo that with an F-150, but you can't. You can't do it with an F-150 because you're, taking an existing thing that worked so well and trying to redo it again right and it wouldn't work you'd have oh, to go what was crop tops. <laughs> oh my god they switched all i heard was crop tops so i was like i was like yeah can i have a little more scotch and she's like sure you came back gave me the glass it was cold i'm like oh chill that's really nice it was white wine. It was my white wine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and what's what's funny is that the the right they can see your fingers. Um, the the rosé is in a highball or a, a double old fashioned glass. Yeah, it is nice. <laughs> yeah, there's so much that's, weirdness going that's on. That's a rental. Ultimate you can... fancy. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, oh. this is the shittiest DRBO ever. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about ever. I've stayed in a couple yeah, ones ever. Ooh. No, it pretends to be nice, but it's really just stupid. It has oh, steel bathtubs, y'all. No, it oh. has no fucking towels and no. The, I I just I just I just watched some towels for you. Okay, it has like five. <laughs> it, has, it has five towels. It has five towels. These are. I'll be right back. It has five are, towels for are, eight people. Five. Yeah, these that's are, not these a good. little problems, you guys. Hundred <laughs> percent. For real. I know. Um. So yeah, it's it, you want to come up with original stuff, but it's still. It still has to fall within the top gear framework. Yeah, oh, um, yeah it has to speak to uh, the the interest of the host, and it has mm -hmm. to be done within two days. And it needs to speak to the original top gear audience. Yeah, how, yeah, because they they sign up for that. How do we get you guys a third day? Yeah. yeah. Um, or a fourth? Shit. Bring Jamie back. Yeah. Let's bring Jamie back. Actually, Who'd... no. Let's get um, fucking. Oh, okay. Who do I need to start campaigning to add a day? Yeah. yeah. We've been working on it. It's only season two. Yeah. No, if you and, want to see a third day of Top Gear America filming, uh, we will start a GoFundMe. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> the buy in is, uh, is $500 per donor. Because I, I, oh. I felt a little bit like a, an addict because I love the episodes, but I'm like, I need, <clears throat> I need more. I need. And it and I I could sense like I was like they've got to be on on budget, it's got to be budget related because like the Overland one I wanted another night I wanted Dax to have mm -hmm. to spoon with Rob I literally wanted, <laughs> but I and oh it's you the mean kind of like thing, full without a paddle is what you're alluding to, 
Yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. And what about talent restriction? There's there's talent restriction, and mm -hmm. it's also like you're you're saying and practicality. You're saying stuff that we would love to do as well. Yeah. Right? No, no. I and, I'm, I'm assumed I was. <laughs> yeah. I want to know how I I want to know how I can help. Social media <laughs> say give us another day. I, Add it up. Yeah. Let the network and the powers that dictate the budget know you want more. Hashtag one more day. I'll stay. Hashtag one more day. <laughs> <laughs> if Dawn were closer, I would high five her. I but yeah. <laughs> I, I think I need it. We need to get shoot day in there. One more shoot day. Yeah, one yeah, more one shoot, shoot day. day. We, we don't want to get confused every time Les Miz comes out again. Uh, oh, fair. That's one day more, but okay. One more. Oh, yeah. We have, yeah. We have can, we, can we talk about that? Get Jamie real fast. Uh, um, let's just say you know we're gonna. There's gonna be more in season two. Let's just awesome. say, stay tuned. You yeah. are, Chris. Uh, <laughs> your your desires are going to be fulfilled. Wait, I want to know um, on another podcast if they can uh, figure out which episodes had the extra. Day. Ooh, yeah, that's good. That's what I want to know. <sighs> So season two, which episodes have extra days? Yep. All yep. right. Noted. And uh, you've sidebar, Chris. Also, go ahead, Ross. You've obligated yourself to come back on. So, I do. I love doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> this is. <laughs> did, did she know that you messed up the name at the beginning? The yeah. off, I, 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 no, I said off the road again, but then I said poop cat. <laughs> yeah. Poop cat, yeah. Just think Willie Nelson and throw off at the beginning. Okay. Okay. What? Off the road again. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Which we had a guest, uh, his name is Taylor Wallace from Go Fast Campers, and they do uh -huh. their own podcast. And he basically just wanted to use our audio to post it at his. And he did that. And then he sang off the road again. And I, have forgotten to contact him and ask him if we could use it. Yeah. Also, the they've been making so much cool stuff, and I've been looking at it so much, and yeah, I can't afford any of it. <laughs> if if you guys do more off road stuff, yeah. If you guys ever do another Overland thing, reach out to GFC. They make Go fast. Awesome stuff. GFC. Go fast GFC. campers. GFC. What kind of stuff do they make? Go stuff? fast campers. I'll they make like the not drop in, but uh pick up bed it's very um, specific uh, yeah. for off-road and overland <laughs> so it, they're they're overlanding add-in campers for yeah. i guess they kind of do everything but it's mostly Live like, in a shoebox not a shed it's I'm tacomas and colorados yeah. and and they do a pop top for jeeps that kind so of they're stuff. Their main goal okay. was minimizing the profile up top, but it's super <clears throat> lightweight, so you can off the road again. Off the road again. Off. Don Don yeah. was looking on the road again. I was <laughs> no, no, no. I was going with Willie. Uh, uh, less tarmac. I'd love to go with Willie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Get out. Never mind. I want. Anyways. I want like two days off that bus. Look at that. Look at that. There's an episode in it in of itself. Two days on the bus with Willie. Five stars. Totally. <laughs> I'm in. Where? What state? Where am I? <laughs> I'm not in oh, one of those states. You guys, I bought my dad uh, Willie Nelson beer you tonight. About it, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Contact high. Jesus. <laughs> Contact high. The Willie Nelson story. Anyways, uh, Chris. Um, yes. I just realized that you and Don have something in common. Uh oh. No. <laughs> Are you a Gemini? Oh, okay. Um, that's not it. Oh, you have both <laughs> sat in the Bentley Mulsanne. <gasps> oh, the one that you were rolling for a little while? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm sure Don yes. was as comfortable as I was. Don was. Did you enjoy the, the, the slow ride we had? I did, but it was disappointing because I really just wanted to drive it. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it was, you know, As, so my reaction to that car is, oh, oh. I want to drive it all Chris, over. Chris, what did you think of the Mulsan when, when I came to Kansas City? So you brought a car that cost uh, more than my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, Not mine, though. But <laughs> I, I, and, and I, I sat in the back as a 
not normal sized person <laughs> and was comfortable. I loved it. I love the switch gear. Oh, leg room. Yeah. Like lots of leg room. And then I love all the switches looking like rustic metallic thing, but they're actually electronically controlled switches. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Those are super fancy. Honestly. Yeah. So it was I, so I, I saw Chris in September and then I saw you at the end of September. Yeah, you drove that right long ago. I, I drove straight to uh, Don's house from uh, Arizona. From That's Arizona, Chris. Yeah. Is that a dog in the background, Chris? Which one? You're, so yes. You're back. <laughs> Is that your dog or a child? Uh, uh, shouldn't be many children at this poison. time of night. Um, but yeah, I have two dogs, so they're running around. Did they get notified that they have a new subscriber? <laughs> to the podcast? Yes. Yeah. Don just, just subscribed. Woo! Woo! Thank you. We'll take it. Thank you, Chris. Even, if, even if just for this one, we'll take it. I'm trying to find my Bentley pictures. Oh, there. Chris, I have them. They were so good. I can't believe it was I'm, that loud. I'm glad you liked them. <laughs> Ross, he handed me his camera and was like, you shoot it. And I was like, but it's your camera. <laughs> I know, but I, I, I can't shoot. Um, I have them I... here. Or, uh, uh, Chris. You have them here? I, I have, should I, should I email you some? I'll let, uh, yeah. Okay. You email them to me, I can download them real fast, and that way we can we... I don't know if I've even seen a mall saw in person. Um, also, in that picture, that F-150 in the background is worth about as much as one of the Malsan's wheels. Go yeah. Ahead. Did you know, if you look closely on the Malsan wheels, they are, those, those, those spokes are hand milled out. And at the bottom, you can see that the, the bottom of the drill, the lathe. Really? Really? Can you pull that back yeah. up, please? So I, because having lots of lathe experience, I'm now more um, curious than I should be. I'm trying to find the one that I was closest to. How big is that car in person? Ginormous. Big. It's a like, big car. Like Chrysler 300 or like S Class? No, uh, uh, big, bigger than the S Class. Bigger. bigger than an S Class? Bigger. Yeah, fuck. Let's, let's take a look at those those wheels. Those are 21s. It's a, it's it doesn't look car. it doesn't look egregiously big on those cars. Um, I I don't know what to say. I I like. You, you got to think those those parking spots are are designed for trucks here in the Midwest, and that thing's taking yep. up the entire length okay. of it. Yep. Yep. Hmm. Uh, it also had eight hundred and eight hundred and some pound feet of torque. Yeah. And slow. I can yeah. attest that uh, Derek pulled out <laughs> and put his foot in it, and uh, yeah, <laughs> there was. I mean, it's not. It's similar to like the Bentega. Like it has. I supercar levels of power but it's just a car yep it's a really um, nice fancy car mm-hmm. i just tried i just realized Chris, i just tried sending you 42 megabytes worth of pictures oh boy so that's not going to happen not tonight okay. so much for that we could do a different google drive <laughs> yeah no i will i will send again i'm sorry here, here you go ross i have the uh picture for size because it's the land cruiser next to it banana for scale you know how big the Land Cruiser is, so. Land Cruisers are surprisingly short, though, in all fairness. Right, but, like, I'm pulled all the way forward to the stall, and that car goes all the way to the back of the stall and hanging over a little bit. And probably weighs a thousand pounds more. Um, similar. How right, is, again. Have you spoken to the current owner of the Land Cruiser recently? Uh, yeah, I got the plate back. Oh, finally. That took long enough. I, Derek, I, when I sold it, I let the guy keep the plate to get him back to California. Uh huh. And then I got a, a letter in the mail with a charge for a turnpike. Three, no. It was like, it was like three and a half months after the deal was done. Yeah. And so I, <laughs> we're getting I'm the sure Don door. appreciated that. Uh, <laughs> I, so basically I sent him an email. I was like, Hey, I'll take care of this one. But like, can I get my plate back? And it, it, <laughs> it showed oh, up in the mail. Uh, Don wants to know if you have any more 
uh, top tier question. Um, they want to go. They want to go refill their coffers. No, and, they want to go to bed. Oh, I don't blame okay. them for wanting to go to bed, especially yeah, if you guys have to just work tomorrow. <laughs> Did you say you have to be up at 5 a.m. tomorrow? Yep. But it's also 9.50 there. So why are you doing this show? No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> <laughs> Derek know. sent me his schedule, and this was the only opening. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. What, what is your – okay, top your questions. What is your – each of you, all three of you that I could at least have seen in the in the last shot, your unobtainium, your your single challenge or shoot or adventure that you want to do but you can't yet. Yet. There's nothing. Um, nothing that I can't. Nothing. Well, nothing that I can't. Okay, I like the optimism. Um, unfortunately for me, there's a lot of stuff that we can. Um, but it's all the show. Yeah, but it's usually budget related and it's no one's fault it's just you know we yeah, always that's we somebody's always, fault well we i mean that stuff, is somebody's fault stuff i was <laughs> is i mean you know pretty expensive i mean someone decide grand, how much i mean the grand tour spent you know, almost five million dollars for opening i mean there's there's stuff that you just can't do but we, like i mean we could make like god if we if we had amazon money god the show we can make mm-hmm. but you know, it's just, it, it comes down to like little things. I mean, we haven't done it yet because we, we know when he's just started our second season. But like when, with Adam Tanner and Rutt, I mean, we made amphibious vehicles and we literally took them from New York to Canada. Right. You know, I mean, it was incredible. Like, you know, stuff like that. I mean, that was a, those are, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars we spent on building those things. And, you know, that, that money is, you know, we could do stuff like that. We just started, but stuff like that is where, we think like where yeah. our minds go. Yeah. That's my big, big challenge. Like, yeah. can we do this? Can I mean, can we actually get a car, you know, across Alaska without touching pavement? Like, I mean, you start big. I mean, there's the, one thing we've been working on for a while, which I'm still pushing to do with the show, is the Trans American Trail. Yeah, um, definitely. I, yeah. I, I, I want to go across the country off road. Mm-hmm. I'll come wave. Uh, Count me in. Yeah. 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 Wait, but can we have Nina? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Nina would be Long great. We have Nina. <laughs> Who's Nina? I'm in. <laughs> but wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be great if, like, like, each guy could I, do I will send car you. Want, regardless, new, you, just, it's, it's, it's open season. Choose whatever you want. We're yeah. starting one end of the mm-hmm. country, going to the other end. No, of the no pavement. Yeah. No, no tarmac. Be, point to point. See, How long is that? God, do you, I don't even know. Do you guys know, like, how, how long did it take people to do that? So, uh, the last time I saw it, um, nine, nine, like healthy nights. So there's, there's like, I was, I was going to say at least like 10 to 12 nights. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you can either. That's a safer, healthier way, but you could fucking, my parents drove across the tree. You can do it. You can do it, but oh, off road, but off road, you're at like 40 miles an hour. So, like, you either start in Oregon or you start in LA, yeah. and then they you both start in LA, right? That's how you make it like a thing. So, if you make it like the cannibal, <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. but like exactly. the actual but, but again, of- that's that's the thing. It's like with this show, it's like it's not balls to the wall speed. It's right. about all those nuances in between, and and that's cool. that's where that's where it lies. And yeah, like, like Rob said, this isn't about the fucking fashion. This is about the way. Yeah. <laughs> journey. Yeah, and when you go when you go off road, that's where that's where you experience it. And like Nina, like it's not about speed. It's yeah. about like millimeters of, of getting well, over a boulder. Yeah, it's like when we did the Rubicon Trail, and I mean it was you know Spoiler ten alert. miles. Yeah, it was ten miles of road. In one day. And it took us three <laughs> days. It took us three days to go ten miles. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean that's filming days. That I mean, so I think for you guys with Trans American Trail to stay off road like the whole coast to coast, it's Oregon to Cape Hatteras. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. Can we land in Cape Hatteras in the winter yeah. and then go tuna fishing? Sure. Sounds <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. I'm down with that. I mean there are like, things like that, like mm-hmm. you know, that's just because that's what's so impressive about like you know i'm sure you guys saw um was it the great hunt and semen yep. yeah <laughs> like, i i actually enjoyed 
I enjoyed the crap. Yeah, the right. combination of words that double on yeah. the right and the same thing. And the thing that's yeah. so great about those, which is so impressive, is like we do the Trans America Trail, right? We can't just go film it. We need to scout it once or twice. Yeah. So right. we need to do it ourselves a couple times. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's the amount of crap that goes that's into required. this. I mean, yeah. they, when they did the uh, <laughs> semen, <laughs> they literally Sorry. did that exact thing for twice. <laughs> Before filming. Before filming. I mean, they got caught up in those storms. I mean, it's just it's incredible. Mm -hmm. so, um, Seaman was an amazing episode. Uh, <laughs> the the hunt one, I was telling Dirt before, like, I needed half of it oh, removed. I just wanted the trip. The, the roads that. themselves. Yeah. Like, they I didn't need that. the pirate stuff. I just needed the roads. They were that insane. Yeah, totally. And also, they needed a Sherp. That was massive hunt, not Seaman. <gasps> I don't care. Yeah. How amazing <laughs> our, our Ukrainian friend that came with the show was special. I, I wish I had been there for that. He and Travis were buddies. And I was like, are we sure? Oh, no. <laughs> Storm the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> he might have. Oh, bad. Not good. We had good cars, though. He was all about appreciating our other. I think I think the thing for me I'd love to see more of is uh, just a little bit of, of breaking the bubble a little bit and going outside our world and, and bringing in more people and, and interacting yeah. with more people. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the oh, things. Yeah. Yeah. Is you can't yeah. do it now because of COVID. Yeah. Big problem. Yeah, right. One of the things that that uh, season three. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that bored me to tears on the original Top Gear were the interviews, but I loved the stuff where, like, you know, James May would learn how to uh, drift with Mika Hakkinen, or yeah. <laughs> you know, or like in the latest ones where just Chris Harris is doing a uh, a uh, a retrospective on or a, a biopic mm -hmm. on Colin McRae, mm -hmm. and then getting to drive his car. There's like, there's a connection to the outside world and the real world that I just love. Go get your bread. Well, I'm going to let it. Is it cake? <laughs> Sorry. And I'm going to let it sit for a little It's time. cake now? I thought it was banana bread. It's ba banana cake. It's banana cake. They've been calling banana bread. It's banana cake. But listen. I'm in. I'm We're in. <laughs> How could banana cake be bad? But I'm going to, if you guys have any other questions, we'd love to answer it. Otherwise, I'm going to head down and see how it's going had one and then cake came up and then now it's like yeah. all I can think about how much cake. does it cost to overnight banana cake to these guys? <laughs> um, more than we're we willing to spend. <laughs> we don't know math, Ross. You know this by now. Uh, Jesus. Um, no, we should the yeah. The uh the thing I can't and, and just looking at maps, if the adventure trail's too big, all the backcountry <laughs> discovery routes would be entire states at a time at least mm -hmm. and that's like yeah. new mexico up through so you know what's funny this is another thing I, I i want to do and when you just said that it just reminded me because we had it about 80 percent complete we were gonna do with tanner and then we just we just it, it, it was too much we couldn't do it and it'd be great to do it with like just lower gas is beat the uh, cross country um speed record Oh, the, the oh, cannonball? Boy, that is a whole different can of worms. What we did, and we were real close to Tanner, is we, because we're going to do it legally, not cannonball on it. We, we contacted state, county. We were going to have police escort all the way through counties. We, I mean, this, this is like a huge, this is a huge deal. We thought it was a joke, so we started making phone calls. We're like, yeah, we could do that. We're like, wait, what? We go to the next county, we can do that. Next state, we can do that. Pretty soon, we have helicopters that were going to refuel while, I mean, it, it was, this is how much in detail it was going to be. I mean, we, I mean, he was going to pee in the car. You know, like, Ew, the David. We, we were going to, we were going to freaking. Ask the diapers. You know, we were contacting Ford, Mercedes, or kind of different companies that was going to give us a car, and we were going to beat the record. But remember, this is a while ago, and it's different now. But yeah, that is something that. A pipe dream became almost reality. Like, can you imagine? Because that's an episode leading up to it as well as the actual. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
don't even know how much top gear it is, but it's just so amazing. Swinging for the fences is, is something we have to do, and then we have to figure it out. Can we do the, it practically? That's the kind of episode that when you're done, I want to watch the documentary on how you got it done. Exactly. Can we get a blooper reel for all of the uh, <laughs> Top Gear America stuff? That's a great question. That is a really good, great but, question. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're freaking funny. These guys have a cracking up. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that's a good question. It's really good. The yeah. first time Derek came on, he told us a story about being in a Zoom meeting with somebody filming themselves and putting themselves into the background of their Zoom meeting. And I was like, it has to be that would be David. Oh, that was so <laughs> funny. It was you. <laughs> It was David. It's so that great. Was amazing. Oh, wow. Well, remember, round of applause. That was so good. He, like, he recorded himself getting a beer. And then he was like walking behind himself. <laughs> oh, I missed that one. I thought it was the other one. Though. No, uh, but David uh, showed up. The first Zoom meeting I was on, he, this is like right when Zoom was kind of whatever, and he had it figured out. And so he showed up as the Brady Bunch, and he was in one of the stairs. <laughs> That's solid. It was really good. Uh, I'm old enough to understand that reference, so we're good. I'll be right yeah. with my bladder. This is like full, like OG smoking tire. Like I have bladder that's going to explode, so I'll be right back. Right. Okay, he bye. didn't have to tell us that. He could have just disappeared <laughs> and come back. We would have known. Uh, this is not our first show. <laughs> my thing I come back to all the time is like I some I'm a minimalist, so like less is more. Yeah. Well, less, less, less beer is, no. Is less bathroom breaks, yeah. more content. Yeah. <laughs> where, so where, where do you look, Chris? I'm in Kansas City. Oh, nice. So if you can pull the nav on the Bentley, it knows. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to meet him. Uh, I, I met him in person for the first time when I was in Kansas City. The, uh, the best part was I posted a picture forever ago and Derek went, oh, I know where that is. And I went, hold up. How? <laughs> Wait, it was in Olathe, right? Yeah, it was. I, I thought it was in Ottawa or Olathe or something. And then you were like, I know exactly where this is. I've got yeah. family there. <laughs> I know, I know. And that's, that's how we connected. Um, Strangely. It's normal. I, I, can, I, can, I can release you if you'd like. Uh, yeah. Um, Go check cake. <laughs> check me if, you, if there's any other questions or any. I will. Nice meeting you. It's nice to meet you too. Just <laughs> tell them to come on up. Oh, bye. I, uh, my favorite part was you referenced an outline earlier and I was like, we had one of those once. <laughs> I know. We, <laughs> I was just looking through the outline and I realized how much we just stomped all over it. We haven't talked about your Sequoia. No, but that's, that's normal stuff that we talk about. Um, we talked about the procedure. Joe is asleep. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. You've got stuff playing for tomorrow. You've got to yeah. do stuff. We got a lot. Um, Polar Vortex didn't touch you guys too much, though, did it? Nope, we're good. See, and that was the weird part is like we had incredible temperatures here and I like looked at Colorado and they were like, no, it's normal. Yep. <laughs> yep, we're good. We're good in Utah. Got some snow. We got some fun stuff, um, but, uh, but, but all manageable. The wheel you posted the other day. Oh, my God. I had to stare at it for like 15 minutes to just figure out what I was looking at. Um, it's, I, I'm not a one for fancy wheels. You know, the Bentley is about as, as adventurous as I normally get because I love a good five spoker, but there was something about that wheel that just was so wonderfully intricate. And it, it literally uh, looks like two wheels have attached themselves to each other. Yeah. It, it, it it's almost like Medusa's hair, right? Yeah. It's just, it, I, I just love it. It's, it's like, uh. The magic eye posters from when I was a kid. If you stared at it yeah, long enough, the image shows up. Your eyes. Yeah, it follows you, like, you wherever you go. Well, if you relax we your eyes, about, there's two different can wheels. We, can we direct our attention to the column on the right where uh, <laughs> a, a certain Jeff Blucker uh, does not like the wheel and then realizes that we're talking about the wheel and that's a tire? But you're wrong. <laughs> like, why would I post a picture of? A Pirelli Scorpion Euro. Well, and not only that, oh. referred to it as Sublime. Yeah. It, the only thing I, I can think, think there is if you were ripping the wheel so hard, it was going straight from solid to gas form. Yeah. Sublimination. You know, Two different states of matter. If I'm going to describe a Pirelli 
wheel or Pirelli tire, it's going to be like, I'm not going to say these are sublime. I'm going to be like, this is made of rubber or this is really loud or bad. This is, this is really bad. Yeah. This is really not what you get. You don't get what you pay for. I'm assuming you, there's, because, there's fairly Formula recent. One and then there's streetcar and they are not the same. No, they're not at all. I'm assuming it's all season, and at some point you guys got them in the snow and found out that meant no season, right? Um, it would be nice to talk about that, but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. Dang it, Jamie left. She couldn't allow it. All I all I can say is that. Uh, uh, oh crap! I don't even know what the brand was. Was it Michelin? Um, all I can say is that there are now snows for 22 inch wheels. Ooh. Yep. I would say about time, but the world um, doesn't really need that. And like, I know. Other um, and let's just say issues that issues we not, should be tackling. It is not the only car uh, that we are featuring in season <clears throat> that has a 22-inch snow tire. I would jokingly say like relevant consumer data, but you know the people listening to us aren't also buying 22-inch snows. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about it, though, it's like uh you know when emmy did the rebel they had to put snow tires on because they didn't have off-road tires right. on the, available for the cullinan um but now those tires are coming online and and so you used to think that like 20s were rubber bands and now 22s and 23s are becoming more prevalent mm. and you have to think what is even if you have the same grip like, you know, say you get like a, a great BF Goodrich or a Yokohama or something like that, um, that can take, that has the, the tread and the grip to take you off road. You have no sidewall. Mm -hmm. um, you have a very vulnerable wheel. And when you DB that, it's just, you're done. Yeah. Like, right. How do you, I remember on my TTRS with, with 19 and trying to get a new set of, of rubber for that. It, it at that you know back in 2013 not every tire shop could deal with 19 inch um tires or 19 inch wheels and tires uh with that that low profile and now 19s are like nothing yeah nothing formula one's going so, to 18s <laughs> so a to get a good profile on a 20 or a 21, you got to be at like 35s or 37s. Uh, B, how was your TTRS experience? Because it is on my short list for like cars I would want to daily forever. Are you? Uh... I, I have a, I like, I, I drive a Miata and. Have a I know you've said that once so. or twice. It's like you're a CrossFitter yeah. or a uh, vegan um miata owners tend to do that yeah it's like a it's not like an emotional deficiency but it's kind of like a, 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 a it's that yeah go ahead do you, know, do you realize how long it took me to understand that miata is always the answer was an acronym <laughs> it's it's I, one day uh, it's I looked, not I, always the answer it's it's so, not but it's so not steven Ross, but you well, know what he's steven saying though right thought, Steven just bought an MD, uh, uh, a 10th anniversary with like 26,000 miles on it. Um, Wait, 26? 26,000 miles. Um, yep, yep. It's living in, in my garage. NB? NB. As in boy with only 26,000 miles on it. Mm hmm. That's I'll try magical. to find you. I'll try, I'll, try, I'll try to find you a picture. Really not a lot of miles. Who, so which every, um, I I, I'm gonna go to the, single, the whole joke. Every, which all of the rubber on that car? Which like hairdresser honestly. didn't drive their car? <laughs> yeah, seriously, man. Uh, okay, I am today years old when I learned that Miata is always the answer is an acronym too. Really? I did not know that. I knew it was wow. always the answer, but I did not know that that was the actual it, acronym. It, yeah, that's that's the joke. Except that's the joke. The joke where it comes full circle is it, it's it's not it's not always the answer. It's Derek, just, what color is it? Um, it's that blue. It's the tenth anniversary. Ooh. Um, I will send it to you guys. Oh, I'm just I'm googling quick pictures. Holy crap, that blue is gorgeous. 
it is mm -hmm. a good blue. It's not necessarily a good paint, but it is a good blue. We just got. Um... Ooh, it's on Steve's. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking. Oh, oh, oh. TTRS. Okay. TTRS. Um, yes. Do you envision yourself taking that car to the track at all? Autocross, yes. Track 50 50. Then it is not the car for you. Okay. The TTRS is a superb 6 tenths car. It is a shitty 9 tenths car. <laughs> I okay. went from a 987 to a TTRS. And um, I'm not trying to promote myself here, but uh, uh, the last article I wrote before going on Top Gear was um, I wrote an article on the drive talking about how factory uh, or, or how cars could be massively improved with a different factory engine. Mm -hmm. And um, and the TTRS engine, the inline five, uh, made the list twice. Once in the RS5 and then again in a, a Cayman Boxster. That five-cylinder is so... It's incredible, and it is just wasted in this front-wheel drive transverse application. You know, a five-cylinder needs to be longitudinally mounted, um, <laughs> even if it's like you know practically hanging over the front bumper, um, or the back tires, or yeah, or the back tires. Um, but it it doesn't it, it should not be in a an MQB. Um, uh, oh, how is Forget that TCRS is MQB. I try to put that out of my knowledge. Right. Because but that's I the thing. Like it's the like car otherwise so much. I in, in many ways I was a beta tester for that car because I I would because I took it to the track so much, I would find flaws in it that you know normal people wouldn't mm -hmm. find. And it didn't have proper brake cooling. You know, those those brakes just gave out all the time and I would bleed the fluid after every session and you shouldn't have oh to my. do that. That's no fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's no fun. And you know, there were ways around it and it, the car didn't rotate because of it, it, its front drive bias. And yes, you get the Haldex stiff. Um, so Haldex stiff, um, brake venting, um, better rotors, uh, what else? wanted something else but by the time you do that you spent fifteen thousand dollars when you could have just gotten a cayman and had fun i was gonna guess so, five but 15 is a fucking huge number to spend on fixing a car when it's already a 30 or forty thousand dollar car yeah um and and i bought mine new and let's just say the um the uh depreciation was not kind to me um, no Don is back, you guys. So, um, <laughs> was it as unkind as my 2014 Challenger? <laughs> no, no. The Challenger, <laughs> the Challenger, honestly, is an SUV. Um, it was 4,400 pounds. Also, that NB is stunning. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, I am. Let me hang on. <clears throat> I am going to. Um, Sell your bread, cake. I'm going to. Stand by. I'm sending them pictures. Stand by. This is a very important podcast. I never keep that in there. Very. Stand by. Where are they? Uh, Ross is in connect. Connect. Oh, Merit. Connect. Got it. Yeah. Connect. I know Merit. Yep. And uh, the prettiest and most dangerous that. parkway of parkways. I. I love yeah. it so much. I love yeah, it. White, white, uh, white flight. White flight. No, no, no. Other rivers. Oh, my God. oh mm -hmm. like oh, I was just talking about Connecticut and like you know you have to have a fancy McDonald's and whatever. Like, is Wait. it Darien where you can't Darien. have? Yeah, no oh, Darien. Darien. Darien's yeah, that's one town over from me, and it is fancy as fancy gets. Mm -hmm. It's fancy as fancy as fuck, as girl. some would say. My sister went to Ridgefield. Ridgefield is very nice. 
much bougie, money. Bougie, bougie, yeah. bougie, bougie. Absolutely correct. Yeah, mm, I have a, she graduated high school and her kids graduated high school. Mm. And her husband was golf pro in Vegas. Mm. Yeah. 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 That all checks out. New Canaan and Darien are like, how much money yeah. do you have? Okay, Darianne. great. Yeah. It is Darien. So, yeah, they do. It's not Darien. It's well, Darien. In it's, I'm like, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, a, a, you don't say New Haven, you say New Haven. You know, this is on at, Haven. You know, at weddings, when like the white guy does the dance, when he doesn't really know how to dance, but he's like doing the dance. <laughs> That's called, I have named that the Darianne. So let that, that spread. That is accurate. Mm-hmm. Thank that you. is exactly right. Let that spread. Oh my God, that's accurate. So here you go, Ross. Here's my TTRS. Okay. Um, hang on, Don. This that's is my TTRS. No, 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 I don't want to see me. <laughs> that's my yeah. TTRS. Okay. Um, it's, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. That engine was great. Mm-hmm. But the chassis was just so overwhelmed by the power and it couldn't keep up. So as a daily, like if you want to daily it and you want to blast around and, mm-hmm. and have a lot of fun and maybe do an occasional autocross, again, doesn't rotate. Then I um, don't care. I don't want it. But if you want to do that, then yeah, get one. It's a long podcast. With that motor... They're with great. the Turbo 5 longitudinally mounted in like a yeah. uh, 718 chassis be the perfect car. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know Hank Rose at Rose Motorsports in Las Vegas? I have heard the name, but don't know. Is he, it- he mods, um, he has like a nine second, um, that's my, um, he has a nine second RS3. Oh yes, familiar. And I want to take, I want to, I want to buy a Boxster or a Cayman, and put that 07K in there. Please don't ever buy a Boxster. Be glorious. Boxster is the cheesiest Porsche from a layman's point of view ever. Yes, but if you put a no, okay. Don says no to the 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 Boxster. Why? What's wrong with the Boxster? Always going to be a boxer. What, what's okay, wrong with that? A wheel of a boxer. What's what's yeah, wrong I, with the boxer? I I want one. <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge boxer fan. I I would prefer a Cayman, but I would I I probably yeah, have boxer no. money. Open roof is better roof. Why do you want to? Why do you not want to experience everything around you? Winter. I uh, yeah I, yeah okay I stand my ground. <laughs> Derek, I have a fun fact for you. Yes, sir. Uh, the Nina you referred to earlier that you sent me. Yes. Yeah. That's our guest next week. Oh, she's awesome. <laughs> oh, yay. We love her so much. So I just don't much. know her on a first name basis yet. <laughs> we love her so well, much. You're going to have such a great time with her. You can okay. tell her that you had worshipers on before <laughs> she came on. Uh-huh. I, I will let her know. I, noted. Duly I, noted. I had like a girl crush. Same. Me, me yeah. too. <laughs> She's girl crush. Yeah. My, my favorite part is I already like her based on her Instagram profile alone. So this should be uh-huh. great. Oh, what is it? I'll send it to you. Okay. Uh, I don't know where my phone went. She's but... amazing. Yep. I was going to be dumb. There were a few guys on set that were like, mm-hmm. and, and then after you know a couple of her moves, they were like, oh yeah, I worship the Grammy Walker because she's so she, badass. She knows her shit. Like she knows, mm-hmm. she knows her shit. She and knows. she is so down to earth. She is. There's no bullshit, but there's also no like, like I know more than you. Right. She just no holier yeah, than thou or anything. It. She's, she's willing. Well. And that's her company is she's willing to take people out and teach them how to off-road. Like, mm-hmm. Yep. In and that's it. the meccas of off-road. She's yeah. great. She's absolutely she's great. She's doing exactly what she should be. Mm-hmm. And I just want to go do it with her. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Well, that's what I said mm. when we came to you. Not like I was that. like, are we doing that's... this with Nina? Yeah, Archer, we would take crazy. Nina. I wanted her. Sweet. I, I think we've reached our limit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm out of questions for you. <laughs> I've been up for almost 24 hours. So. <laughs> That's Go get 20, 20 hours. So. Um, we, 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 we're we losing Dawn. She says, Again. Yes. Again. I don't Round blame two. her. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Bye, Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Bye. Thanks for hanging. <laughs> Sweet dude. Do you want to, so, what do you want to plug? <laughs> um, I, I, I implore everyone, I implore everyone to uh, get a Motor Trend on demand subscription. Um, it's really not as expensive. It's like five bucks a month, you guys. It's cheaper and, than and, that. Right. What, what, it, it, it it's could cheaper be cheaper than, than that. that. Yeah. yeah. The, the, but, every look, now and then there's the $1 a month. There's the $1 that a month. But again, you guys, you know, I I know that uh, a lot of people think that uh, it should all be free, but we we work really hard to um, to to bring this stuff to life, and it, the money has to come from somewhere. Yeah. And we are in a brave new world where it's not advertised or supported. You know, you're not watching commercials every 15 minutes, every five minutes, whatever. And those, well, that was. That, it's that was not always... just the five dollars. It's 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 seeing another name on the subscription list really does spell the difference between whether or not we we continue to make this show. So, um, so please like like and literally subscribe. <laughs> Deservingly so. Thanks, guys. Uh... All right. Well, Derek. Yes. This has been fun. Yes, it's always fun with you guys. If you happen to make it east, give me a shout. I shall. I shall. Watch, you'll hop on another Bentley. No, wait. <laughs> you never know. Dude, you I never know. Seriously. Like... After making that drive to Southern Utah and back, I can't imagine how great that drive was in that car. Uh, yeah. I, 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 and, and Chris, <laughs> you'll laugh when I say this. I can't wait to write that article. <laughs> how long ago was that trip? <laughs> We're not talking about that. We are, we are, and, and if, if my editor of that story hears this podcast, uh, this yeah. conversation never happened. This conversation <laughs> never happened. Look, it's, it's one of those, it's a very personal article. Um, yes, it is. but it, it, it's also finding time to get in that headspace and finding a time to do it right and do it justice. So it, it, it will come to life. Um, and hopefully soon. Sounds good. I look forward yeah. to it. So I'm going to do all the normal wrap-up stuff. You can rate and review us on iTunes. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Also, like and subscribe Top Gear America on Motor Trend. Uh, Derek's on Instagram. Derek Lane Powell. Derek's on Twitter. Derek Powell. I'm still at Overlanding Dad. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends. It can't be that late because I didn't mess up Ross's. <laughs> Somebody today, literally at work, when I told them my name, said, like the one from Friends? And I just put my head down. I didn't even like, answer. The name is lit- my sandwich. <laughs> I've still yet to see more than one minute of the show. So. <laughs> oh, God damn it. All right. Yeah. He's a baby. <laughs> it was it was like five years before my time. Stop it. You can stop right there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyways. That's it. That's our show. We've done it. And now I'm going to get to editing. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Thank Bye, you so guys. much, Derek. Have a good night. Night, Me y'all. Too.